breaking news tonight at 5:30. It's unusually cold for this time of year, with temperatures dropping all of next week. The culprit? Too many elementary school kids are creating new ice cream flavors. Burr, but also yum. More on that later. And this just in: there are rumors of an increase in secret spy activity in our neighborhood. Anyone could be undercover, even your baby sister. Here's a snippet of some local interviews. Excuse me, sir. Are you an undercover agent? Who? Me? What? Why would you ask me that? I'm just your ordinary law-abiding citizen. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to um um go check on my pet chicken. That's all for now. See you at 5:30. And almost live from room 115, it's Miss Sonogo. The Bad Seed, written by Jory John, illustrated by Pete Oswald. I'm a bad seed. A bad seed. Oh yeah, it's true. The other seeds, they look at me and they say, "That seed is so bad." When they think I'm not listening, they mumble. There goes a bad seed. But I can hear them. I have good hearing for a seed. How bad am I? You really want to know? Well, I never put things back where they belong. I'm late to everything. I tell long jokes with no punchlines. I never wash my hands or my feet. I lie about pointless stuff. I cut in line every time. Hey, watch it, Mister! Can you believe this guy? I stare at everybody. I glare at everybody. I finish everybody's sentences, and I never listen. And I do lots of other bad things too. Know why? Because I'm a bad seed. A bad seed. I just can't help it. Sure, I wasn't always this bad. I was born a humble seed on a simple sunflower in an unremarkable field. I had a big family, seeds everywhere. We found ways of having fun. We were close. But then the petals dropped, and our flower drooped. It's kind of a blur. I remember a bag. Everything went dark, and then, then, a giant. I thought I was a goner. I thought I was done for. I screamed and I hollered. But I was spit out at the last possible second. I flew through the air and I landed under the bleachers with a huge thud. When I woke up, it was dark outside. A wad of gum had softened my fall. I felt okay, but something had changed in me. I'd become a different seed entirely. I'd become. A bad seed.
a bad seed. That's right. I stopped smiling. I kept to myself. I drifted. I was friend to nobody and bad to everybody. I was lost on purpose. I lived inside a soda can. I didn't care, and it suited me. Until recently, I've made a big decision. I've decided I don't want to be a bad seed anymore. I'm ready to be happy. It's hard to be good when you're so used to being bad, but I'm trying. I'm taking it one day at a time. Sure, I still forget to listen, and I still show up late, and I still talk during movies, and I do all kinds of other bad stuff. But I also say thank you, and I say please, and I smile, and I hold doors open for people. Not always, but sometimes. And even though I still feel bad sometimes, I also feel kind of good. It's sort of a mix. All I can do is keep trying, and keep thinking. Maybe I'm not such a bad seed after all. Hey, look! There goes that bad seed. Actually, he's not all that bad anymore. I heard that. The end. Minus five, four, three, two, one. Booster ignition and liftoff of Discovery. Have you ever wondered how rockets lift off into outer space? This week, we are going to explore the principle of propulsion or thrust by creating our own balloon powered cars. This is what you will need for the experiment to build our cars. FYI, if you have Legos at home, you can use them to build your car. Make sure they have wheels attached. I don't have Legos, so I use these materials instead to build my cars. First, I built the base of my car using cardboard that I cut out from an empty milk carton. You can also use cardboard from boxes and other packaging material. Next, I took four caps from water bottles to create my wheels. If you don't have water bottle caps, you can make wheels using cardboard. For this next part, please make sure to do this only with an adult. You will need a sharp tool to pierce a hole into the bottle caps so that you can later slide a barbecue skewer through them. Make sure that the hole in your wheel is centered or else it may cause your car to wobble. Carefully have an adult help you push one end of the skewer into the wheel. This will form your wheel and axle. You may remember from episode 2 that the wheel and axle is an example of a simple machine. Add on the second wheel to the other end of the skewer. Test out your wheels and axles. Are they too wobbly? Do the wheels seem stuck? You may have to adjust the holes in the wheels to make sure they are centered and also not too tight on the skewers. This will create friction and prevent the wheels from moving freely. I later went back and added in a straw over the skewer to reinforce the axle and to help keep the wheels in place. This is an option if you would like to try it. Next, I attached the cardboard base of the car to my wheel and axle pair. I used a marker to help me make sure my wheels and axles were parallel to prevent my car from wobbling and zigzagging. After attaching the first pair, give it a test. Now, on to the next.
Nice, I'm ready to test it out on the runway. Not bad, it mostly traveled in a somewhat straight line, so I'll take it. Now it's balloon time. Attach the mouth of a balloon over one end of a straw. I used tape to make sure the balloon stayed in place. You will need to make sure the tape securely holds the balloon to the straw so that air does not escape when you blow into it. I gave it a test, and air ended up leaking out. My tape was not strong enough, so I used a rubber band to reinforce the tape. Aha! Success! No more leaking air. Next, I attached the straw to the base of the car. Make sure part of the straw is hanging off of the cardboard so that you can blow air into it. Here, I test the balloon again. I'm ready to put my creation on the runway. Wow! What power! But it ended with a crash. This run was a little wobbly, so I had to go back and fix and straighten out my wheels. Trial run number two. I rewatched this probably a thousand times. What a straight and fast shot. Run number three. This is my view of blowing up the balloon. Okay, that was fun. But back to the drawing board. I want to test out a different car using a water bottle instead of cardboard. Later, I will compare the results. How fast did they each go? How far did they travel? First step is to dismantle the wheels and axles from the first car and attach them onto the water bottle. Next, I gave the wheels a test to make sure they were still functioning properly. I took it to the runway to be sure. Well, they crashed both times, but managed to make it far enough for me to be satisfied. This baby's ready for the balloon attachment. This time, I used a different straw. The straw center is much smaller in diameter than the first straw I used. Keep this in mind when you see what happens later when I take the car for a test run. The balloon color changed to green, but it is still the same type and size of a balloon. Let's go! Oh, wow! I felt like I was watching a turtle crawl in super slow motion. Let's look at that again. Test run number two. Wow, still slower than my cardboard car. Let's take a look at a side-by-side -side view of the two cars. The differences in power and speed are clearly evident. Well, what changed? Hmm. When I built the second car, I changed the base of the car from cardboard to a water bottle, but I also changed the size of the straw. This time, I will only change one thing. I will keep the water bottle as a base, but reuse the straw from the first car. Let's see what happens now. Well, aside from the water bottle car crashing and burning there at the end, what differences did you notice? What do you think caused these differences? Now, let's talk about the science going on behind the scenes of our balloon-powered cars. When we inflate a balloon, it stores up what we call potential energy. You can visualize it as the stretched rubber and the air packed inside the balloon. When we let the air out of the balloon, this potential energy changes into an energy of motion called kinetic energy, which we visualize as the balloon zooms around the room. Another way to think about the balloon's movement is to use Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. When we inflate a balloon and then release the opening, or nozzle, the rubber on the balloon contracts and pushes the air out of the opening. The equal and opposite reaction is that the air pushes back on the rubber, propelling the balloon and the car forward. This principle is used in real rockets and jets that shoot a high-speed stream of gases out the back of their engines, propelling the vehicle forward. In this project, we use this principle of propulsion to build a toy car that is propelled forward by the stream of air escaping a balloon as it deflates. Now, it's your turn. Try using different straw and even balloon sizes. What happens if you only fill up the balloon partly with air? Does the material and design of the car matter? What if you use two balloons and two straws? 
how will all of these changes affect how far and how fast your car goes? Or try out what I did. I put items on top of my car, including Taki, but it didn't seem to go anywhere. I wonder why. Try it out and be sure to share your results with us. What's your hypothesis? What do you think will grow? Alright, we think um, these ones will grow um, quicker because they're in soil and that's normally where uh, most seeds uh, come from. I really it's yummy. It's really yummy. And we really, um, and we'll send you some pictures maybe with, um, earlier and later in the process of how the beans are doing. Bye bye, Miss Nogo. What you're doing? We're making this experiment on some of the blue, the water that's colored blue is going down here, some of it's staying up there. Yeah. And we squirt it through here. The cloud. This What's is, the cloud made out of? Shaving cream. Yeah. It's kind of actually floating up, Henry. Yes, a lot of this. But stuff it fits down. Yeah. It's so cool. Do you have a super cool science experiment that you want featured on our show? Send me an email including any videos or pictures of your experiment. Remember to ask an adult for permission first and for help. What are you up to, Taki? I'm working on my new ice cream flavor creation. Want to see? Sure. Oh, wow. What ingredients are these? Uh, just your normal cinnamon sticks, spicy pistachios, pepperoni, french fries that I found hiding under my couch, celery, and grape jelly. Hmm, do you think people will eat this? Of course they will. This will be the greatest ice cream ever. Now. Watch the magic happen. But first, let's take a look at our posted question answers from last week. Last week's posted question was, invent a new ice cream flavor. What is it called? What ingredients are in it? Let's take a look at your creations. Sounds delicious. Mine would be um ice cream. Ice cream would be um 
um, um, a chocolate ice cream and like a Kinder Egg inside. <coughs> I very love Kinder Eggs and fries. Well, I'll put it inside the ice cream, then I'll get a toy. Oh, that's why. And parents, here's a trick for your kids. If your kids don't want to eat medicine, put the medicine inside a lollipop and they'll just look it all off. Presenting my ice cream recipe. Ta-da! I just have to freeze it. Want a taste? Um, I have to go. I think I have to check on my pet chicken. Hey, that's my line. Come back and listen This week's post-it question is, a mysterious package arrives at your front door. You carefully open the box. What's inside? Do you have an answer to this week's post-it question? Send your answers to me. Ask an adult for permission. My email address is msanogo at cps.edu. Hmm, where did I put that cayenne pa Taki, what are you doing in here? I'm practicing staying very still, like a ninja. Why on earth are you in my spice cabinet, though? Well, this is the best place to be stealthy. And I knew it would work because I surprised you! Well, Taki, if your goal is to be like a ninja, I can teach you some exercise workouts where you have to stay very, very still. Really? Well, what are you waiting for? Let's get to it! Hiya! Scared you again. Today I'm going to show Taki and you four examples of isometric exercises. Think of a flamingo that balances perfectly still on one leg. Isometric exercises involve engaging our muscles without even moving. How is this possible? Let's take a look. This is the high plank position. Start on all fours on the floor with your hands stacked directly under your shoulders and your knees bent. From there, step one leg back at a time to come into the high plank position on your palms. Hold your body still and remember to breathe. Try to hold this position for at least 15 seconds. From here, you can lower your arms down to the forearm plank position. Make sure your spine is straight and that your belly doesn't drop too low. Also try to hold for at least 15 seconds. Next, I rotated my body over into a side plank position. My forearm is on the ground while my other arm is lifted. Lift your hips into the air and make sure you stack your feet on top of one another. If you want an extra challenge, try lifting the top foot into the air. You can also do a side plank on your palms instead of your forearms, like this. This is the Superman hold. It's pretty fun. It's a great way to strengthen your upper and lower back muscles. One thing to note that I am doing incorrectly here is I am looking up and forward. Try to look down, like actual Superman looking down at the cities below him. Looking down prevents putting extra stress on your lower back. Our final isometric exercise is the hollow body hold. Lie down flat on your back and squeeze your belly, imagining as if you are pulling your belly button towards the floor. Your arms and legs should be held straight out from your body. See how long you can hold this position. Hope you had fun. See you next time. Do you have a super fun exercise or workout activity that you want featured on our show? 
ask an adult to help you record your exercise. Then, send your videos to msinogo at cps.edu. Taki and I can't wait to sweat it out with you. Enter password one seven. Enter access denied. What wrong password again? No, 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 no. Taki, looks like you're stressed out. Stressed out? What gave it away? What are you trying to do? I'm trying to get into the top secret database so I can communicate with Agent T Rex through a top secret Bluetooth device. But it keeps telling me that I have the wrong password! What's the password? Here, take a look. Find the length of this picture frame in inches. Enter your measurement into the password box below. But I already measured, see? It's clearly 17 inches! But it's telling me the password is wrong! Access denied. Whoa, Taki. Did you slow down and double check your work? No! But, Taki, all good mathematicians double check their work. Look, lady, I'm in crisis mode. Can we just ask the mathematicians to help me? Go for it. Mathematicians, it is me again, Taki. Except I'm undercover, so please don't say anything. Please help me find the secret password to get into the top secret database. To find the secret password, you have to find the length of the picture frame in inches. Please find my mistake and tell me what the correct length is. Don't forget to check your work, like Miss Sunoko said. Access denied. No, no, no. Agent T-Rex was last located on Taki Island. Our data shows that he traveled a total distance of 230 miles. Use the map coming up next in this video to help Agent Taki find Agent T-Rex's location. This is the ancient map of Madagascar. Remember, Agent T-Rex was last located on Taki Island. If he traveled a total of 230 miles, where on this map could he be? Is he at Whale Watch Bay? In Starfish Cove? Maybe he's at Lookout Lighthouse. Help Agent Taki locate Agent T-Rex before time is up. You have one week, mathematicians, to accept your mission. What I did was I, I first added 91 plus 80 and I added just equal 180. 41 plus 67 plus 91, 199. Then, I did 71 plus, no, 72 plus 91, that equals 163. Then I added 163 plus 67 equals 230. So what I think he went, I think T-Rex. Show me here. I think T-Rex went to Whale Watch Bay because But it, which, by going how? So it goes from Tokyo Island plus, okay, that, Plus 72, you go to Lookout Lighthouse. Plus 91, you go to Starfish Cove. Plus 67 equals where Watch Bay. All of those stay together would equal 230.
Do you have a solution for our math problem of the week? Email me your response. And for a bonus challenge, is there more than one way to solve the problem? I can't wait to hear from you. It's time for Talkie the Talking Triceratops time! Wait, that's too long! Triple T time! Yay! Knock knock! Who's there? Alpaca? Alpaca who? Alpaca suitcase! You pack a lunch! <laughs> knock knock! Who's there? Check! Check who? Check your shoelaces! They're untied! <laughs> what on earth? Knock knock! Who's there? Alex? Alex who? I'll ask the questions around here. Thank you very much. Hey. 